Hi, I'm Alex Maxwell. This is my performance using the Launch Key Mini, Ableton Live Lite, and the Loop Master Sound Pack. I hope you enjoy it. Hi again, I hope you enjoyed the track. Now I'm going to take you through how I put it together and performed it using the Loop Master Sounds and Ableton Live Lite. I selected my drum loops from the Loop Masters package, um, dragged them in as clips onto the audio tracks just like this. I wanted one percussive one um, and one with hats to add some high energy and add one darker and fatter loop to give some, some weight later on. So I next chose some drum samples to create my drum rack instrument for playing live. Um, I just flick through my Loop Master samples, went to the Freemasons, to the drum section. Here's my clap, I'm not going to show you them all, it'll take a while, but literally click and drag onto the drum rack, to the pad there, and there's my clap. Um, so for the rest of the samples, just drag them into the allocated pads or keys that you see on the drum rack like that. Um, and then hereabouts you can manipulate all the different functions um, of that sample. To dial down my very bright shaker, um, just here, just rolled off some of the frequency, cut off. Uh, and then I allocated these three samples to the drum pads just by dragging and dropping. To add some fatness and a tiny bit of drive and presence, I threw in a dirty bounce compressor and a snare compressor um, into the effects chain and just tweaked the sound how I wanted it. So the first thing you hear in the track is the percussive loop. Um, into the effects chain for this, I just added a high pass filter and used the MIDI mapper button like this to assign my first rotary control. So we click the MIDI mapper button up here, and here's my frequency. You can see it's already there. I'll get rid of it and we'll bring it back in again. Click that, and as I move, it's assigning that rotary. You can see there. If I come back into control, you can see that's now controlling that sweep. So in the effects chain, you can of course add multi-effects. So to make this intro a bit more distinctive, I use this chamber trio delay here um, and match the pitch there to uh, the same key as the track, which is A minor. Uh, it doesn't have the A minor key there, but it just, by moving the pitch, already listening whether that works or not, and we're in the A minor key. Um, I didn't want it to sound all the way through the piece though and, and run through, so I just wanted to automate that at the beginning as well. Now I've only got two hands, so to be able to perform the parts and to automate, I wanted to assign the wet dry signal to the same rotary so that as I reduce the filter and reduce the frequency, I'm reducing the, the, the wet signal and actually taking out the delay as we get nearer to the original loop sound. So to do that, exactly the same thing, just if we get rid of it here, you can see there in the MIDI mapper, clicked on that take it out of in control, move it and it's assigned. So back in control you can see that's now, if I come out of the MIDI mapper function, you should see that moving both of those as you do. Now I wanted to keep in some of the wet dry signal so as I bring it right down, so to do that we go back to the MIDI mapper and we can adjust the minimum and maximum values of that movement. So if I bring this up on my delay, you can see that there moving around. It means that as I bring down the rotary to zero, it's not going to take 
my delay down to zero so I can maintain a little bit of that tonality from the delay throughout the piece in that loop. So now, if I keep it there around 30, if I come back out of my MIDI mapper, you should see my wet dry signal down here doesn't go all the way down, it stays at 20 now. And that way you can set your maximum values and you can edit the way that you manipulate the effects with a single rotary. So next, uh, I use the track control to scroll to my next sound, so that's easy, just clipping between there. Um, so usually it'd be the drum rack sound, I'm just going to flick to the mod amp to demonstrate a couple of things here. Um, now here I'm not triggering the clips, I'm actually playing the clip on the fly and looping it, which you saw from the performance. Now usually with uh, the next two clips, which is why I've gone to the mod amp and the wobble bass, um, it's pretty straightforward in, in, in control mode on the launch key, you just hit the top unlit pad corresponding with that MIDI channel. So let me show you what's going on there. We're in control, um, and while this is running, I can hit and off it goes. So you get the idea, that's as easy as it is literally by hitting the pad that's unlit and it records your loop and then you hit it again and your, your loop's finished and it repeats. So you've got that, assuming your timing is good. Now with the drum pads, because I need to use the drum pads, I'm going to come out of in control mode and use the pads. So I can't hit my channel and actually get it going. So what I have to do is assign the record button to one of the pads while out of in control mode. It's really easy, it just gives me a much easier access to stop and start in that mode outside of the in control mode before I go back in to manipulate the rest. So we go to our MIDI mapping. Um, you can see here again, here's my, my um, control there for the record. Um, if I take out the drum loop, it'll be a bit easier to see, and we'll do it again. So let's just delete that, go back to MIDI Mapper, let's get rid of my map there. I'll click on that one there, and I come out again in control mode, and then I've assigned my pad to record. Easy as that. To come back out of mini mapper mode and you should see now as I hit that particular pad it starts recording and there's my loop not played particularly beautifully but you get the idea so just to bring in the next section with some impact and some lift before his solo uh, I've just used a low round pad to stop all the active clips so you can hear it running and then use the top pad to actually bring in all the clips in that row. So i just demonstrate that for you. There's all my clips running. Press the lower pad and we just stop all the clips there and it's just a case of timing within the performance. So the final effect I've put on the track is to filter and um, chop up my track all at the same time just with the touch of the pad. So as you saw before with the MIDI mapper, I've assigned a pad to activate these two effects that you see down here, the slap back and the follow me. Now to do this and not affect my solo sound and my toms, I didn't want my toms to be, to be affected by it so they sound nice and crisp and clear at the end, um, I've set up a send and sent the dark loop, the perk loop, the drum rack, the mod amp, the wobble bass, everything but those, those two sounds you can see here to my send. So here's my send, I've enabled it chop filter and then within that send I've got my slap back chopped uh, effect and my uh, follow me filter. Sign those to pad eight, and you can see my pad eight now turns those on and off. The important thing here is not only set up the send so that you're not affecting the other channels, but on my audio out, my audio two, needs to be to the send only for those particular channels. The masters here are set up for the channels that aren't being affected by the send, they're going straight to the master and bypassing that that filter. It's very important so when I turn them on it's affecting only those ones and I'll just play a little bit so you can hear that. Let's just get this going. Come back out of in control mode. You can hear the filter there working. Thanks very much for listening. I hope I've given you some good ideas and shown you just how flexible you can be with the Launch Key Mini and using Ableton Live Lite. Good luck with it. Enjoy. Cheers.